This, this has divided the Second Amendment community as to whether or not illegal aliens, who are by definition breaking the law, um, should enjoy the ability to keep and bear arms. Now, in today's video, we're going to be talking about a recent ruling that came out of a district court in Illinois, and it specifically questions whether or not an illegal immigrant in the United States can still exercise the right to keep and bear arms. And the case is called U.S. v. Flores. And the judge, I do believe, this is uh, Judge Coleman, came to the correct conclusion. I don't believe she arrived at the same the proper conclusion through a proper analysis, and we'll go over that. But ultimately, I, I think she did in fact get it right. Now there are this this has divided the Second Amendment community as to whether or not illegal aliens who are by definition breaking the law um, should enjoy the ability to keep and bear arms. Uh, I'm going to explain philosophically why I think that she kind of got it right. So the first threshold question that we have to ask is whether or not a right is something that is bestowed by the government. I don't believe it is. In fact, it can't be. A fundamental, specifically enumerated right must come from something that is transcendent to humanity. We already know that the Bill of Rights does not grant rights. The Bill of Rights recognizes pre-existing rights. These rights existed before the ratification of the Constitution. The framers simply acknowledge them. They recognize them. And then they created limitations as to what the government can do because the people still retain these rights. Second Amendment being one of them. Now, that then begs the question, okay, well, if they are pre-existing rights, where do rights come from? All right? Well, we do have an answer, and it's actually articulated in the Declaration of Independence. Rights come from the Creator. Some of them are inalienable. Even if you want to give them up, you can't. You're stuck with them. We know the three that are articulated in the Declaration, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But the, the beginning phrase of that, amongst these, are life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. We know that those three do not represent an exhaustive list. There are potentially millions of pre-existing inalienable rights. It's just that at the time of the ratification, they articulated and they recognized only three of them. Now, when the Constitution was developed and the debate had gone through as to whether or not a right would be codified in the Constitution, um, there was some argument as to whether or not it, this was a particularly good idea. After all, if you identify certain rights and that ends the list, then there could be an argument that would be made that that's it, we're done. These are the rights that we recognize and there's no more. That's one of the reasons why we have the 10th Amendment. You know, effectively saying, hey, listen, uh, we've, come, we've recognized these rights, but there may be more, so whatever we haven't been able to discover, that goes in this amendment. The people retain these rights. Well, we then go back to that cosmological question. Rights come from the creator, all right? Well, it doesn't make logical sense for the creator to be sitting in that cloud in the sky and say, okay, I am going to create this thing called humanity. And I am going to bestow upon my creation certain rights. But in the late 17th century, there's going to be this geographic location called North America. And for people that happen to be living 
in North America, well, I'm going to give them super duper rights. Okay, that, that, that just theologically doesn't make any sense. Rights are sacrosanct and they are completely encapsulating all of humanity. I am oftentimes, when I talk to my clients in my CCW classes, I tell them rights are in fact universal. The Fourth Amendment to the Constitution, just as it exists in the United States, also exists in Mexico. The Second Amendment to the Constitution, just as it exists in the United States, also exists in Japan. It exists in Russia. It exists in Germany. It's just that those states are not enlightened enough to recognize the presence of that right. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It just simply means that they haven't recognized it. Our framers were wise enough, were brilliant enough to recognize that existence and codify it in the Bill of Rights. All right, so if we know that this right is universal, right, then it becomes a little problematic if a right only manifests if it's attached to citizenship. And after all, if someone were in the United States and they were, you know, uh, living in an apartment and the police were to knock down the door to their apartment because they didn't like, you know, the kind of vehicle that they were driving or something like that and did a full search of their apartment, I don't think anybody would sit there and say, well, uh, that, that, that is a violation of their Fourth Amendment rights against illegal searches and seizures, but this particular individual happens to be a Canadian resident, so therefore they don't have any Fourth Amendment protections. No, of course not, because their citizenship is not determinative as to whether or not that right actually accrues. Now, let's assume for the sake of argument that they are in the country illegally. The Fourth Amendment still exists. They would still need to have a warrant in order to be able to search their premises. Well, that would also extend to the Second Amendment by definition as well. Here's the caveat. While I do believe this individual is entitled to Second Amendment protections, and by the way, this is not the argument that the judge came up with. The, the, uh, the judge essentially just dismissed the fact that the uh, individual falls outside the scope of being a law-abiding citizen. Um, that's usually the threshold question. And I believe that there was some degree of a political uh, statement that she was making as, as to that. But that notwithstanding. Um, so if they, you know, if the judge had been more forthright and looked at the philosophical implications of restricting the Second Amendment exclusively to uh, citizens, uh, that would have made sense. Instead, she, you know, focuses just exclusively on this on the Bruin analysis, uh, which. You know, ultimately, when she switches over and looks at the history, text, and tradition, she's correct on, on how this came about. But I don't think she went to the deeper level of analysis in looking at the fact that it is, in, it is a specifically enumerated right. Um, my suspicion is that this will be appealed, of course. Um, but like I said, within our community, I think that we need to understand that if this is a God-given right, a God-given right cannot be essentially terminated because of a citizenship requirement. Now, I will personally tell you that I believe that our borders need to be enforced, okay? There's no if, ands, or buts about that. Uh, but I think we also have to be philosophically consistent. I will also tell you that I would have absolutely no hesitation of the judge saying, look, you have a right to keep and bear arms, okay? You should not be held to answer 
for being a non-legal resident and in possession of a firearm and then immediately remand him to federal custody for deportation for being in the country illegally. I think that would be perfectly fine, okay? But as it relates to a specifically enumerated right having a citizenship requirement, that is just as noxious to the concept of the Second Amendment as a specifically enumerated right having a virtue test attached to that. And we've seen that before in cases like Cantor v. Ohio, where you have a non-violent felon suddenly stripped for life of his Second Amendment rights, even though no such virtue test existed at the time of the ratification. So this video is being sponsored by USCCA, and they're doing a giveaway right now. It's incredibly cool. You're going to want to participate. Now it does end soon. So you're gonna wanna click on the links directly below this video and participate. Anyways, like I said, this is a controversial decision, and I am, doing my best here to be sort of, uh, you know, intellectually uh, consistent and a philosophical purist as it relates to, uh, you know, to the Second Amendment. But I do definitely understand that especially with all of the controversies associated with illegal immigration into the United States and all of the social ills that that brings, um, that this bothers a lot of people and I completely respect that. In any event, um, if you would like to email me, by all means do so at stephen at artemishq.com. And as always, train constantly, train consistently, train repetitively, and train with purpose. Above all else, stay safe.